Hey, what is going on, everybody? This is Prophet Rob Sanchez with my good friend. His name is Prophet Troy Black. So good to have you here, Troy. Hey, Welcome. Prophet Rob, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited, man. Yep. What we're going to do is for the next, oh, little bit, we're just going to talk prophetic stuff. We're just going to share and find out a little bit about Troy. We're going to talk a little bit about the prophetic. We are probably going to cover some of the things that he feels, senses, hears, sees, and I'll do the same. We're just going to kind of bounce off one another and we're going to just talk about prophetic. So if you have any questions, this would be a great time to uh, just post them and we'll do our best to read them and cover them. Sheree Patel, bless you from the UK. Uh, Lydia Sanchez said, I'm so excited for this. Alex Bromley, you know, you're ready. I don't know what you're ready for, but I'm ready too. So we might be ready for something different, but we're just ready. And so what we want to do is we just really want to be a voice of encouragement. In this hour, there are so many things that are taking place in the world. It's easy to become distracted. But I'm a firm believer that my sheep hear my voice, as it says in the book of John. When we hear his voice, can I tell you what happens? There should be a confidence, there should be a boldness, there should be a certainty and a surety that rises up on the inside of you that lets you know that everything is going to be okay. One of the things that I've come to fall in love with the prophetic is this. One word spoken by God through a messenger into the heart of an individual can change and transform a life forever. That's why the Bible says, out of all the gifts, covet that you would what? Prophesy, because I believe what God is longing to do is bring a word into somebody's life that will strengthen them, encourage them, build them up, and take away weakness. And can I tell you today that, you know, the Bible says something simplistic. It says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so today, what we want to do is we just want to concentrate on the Holy Spirit. We want to concentrate on his power, his presence. And what we want to do is see God just really encourage you. So I'm going to ask Troy if he would just open up in prayer yeah. and then we're going to jump right in because I love it because he's a presence guy. And so I love men that love presence. And he, every time I see him start his show, he always opens up with a word of prayer. And I love that. So go for it. Lord Jesus, we just love you so much. And I just invite you, Holy Spirit, to just show up any way you want to, Lord, just to break our expectations of what you want to do. I just thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you for your voice. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that just invites us into the throne room of God constantly. That there's no separation now. There's no wall between us and our loving creator because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. When we accept that, Jesus, I just ask that you would have your way today. I just thank you for showing up. I thank you not just for being here, Lord, in the studio, but showing up for the people listening, wherever they may be, in their car, at home, at work, wherever they may be, going for a walk. I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing up and moving and speaking even more specifically than we could speak here, Lord, to every person listening. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Jesus, we know that apart from you, we can't do anything. It's all you, Lord. It's all you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well, amen to that. Man, I can feel the presence of the Lord already. I can sense his goodness just descending and his presence rising up in me. You know, when the presence begins to rise, you know, it, it just, I feel this unction. Mm -hmm. And I just really feel like God is going to do something special today. If that's to minister to a family member, to minister to you individually, or just say something that captures a man or a woman's heart that sparks life. Mm. So tell me, what, let, let our audience know where are you from, and then just jump into how did you... How did you learn to hear God's voice? Yeah, so I'm from Texas um, originally. I went to school in Arkansas, moved back to Texas, and uh, got married, have a wonderful wife and four kids, one on the way. So big family. We're working on a big family. And uh, yeah, um, man, learning to hear God's voice, you know, for me it was, I didn't even know necessarily that that's what was happening. I think for me it was just, and, and I never put the word prophecy on it at all. It was just 
like, now I know God. Like, that was it, you know? It was like the day where the Holy Spirit, uh, honestly, I, I believe it was the day I got saved that I, that I first believed the gospel, that the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And he was the one that preached the gospel to me, like, and I finally got it. You know, like, like I'd heard it a million times, and I, and I was still in this place where I thought, like, I have to earn God's love, and I've been doing that up to a certain point, and then I failed, and now I don't have God's love anymore because I failed. You know, so, like, that was my version of the gospel, and it wasn't the real gospel. And the Holy Spirit, one night, you know, I started to seek the Lord. I started to have a little bit of faith, you know, just rise up where I was like, if God says he's going to show up when I seek him with my whole heart, I'm going to keep doing that, right? Like, I'm going to do that and see what happens. Like, and it was a little bit of a, I don't even know if, I'm not even sure if God's there kind of moment, you know? And one night the Holy Spirit just spoke so clear. And I, it was so, I'd never heard him before as far as I know, but it was like so clear I knew exactly who was speaking. Like there was no, I was like, God is speaking to me right now. And he just said, Troy, the father loves you. And because he loves you, Jesus came to die for you. And, and all of your sins can be forgiven when you believe that. And I was just like, wow. You know, like I was like, I've heard this a million times and I, I just got it. Like right now, like it was You so had your amazing. God aha moment. Yeah. And, and that was it for me. That, from that day on, I was like, I just want to hear that voice again. Like that was it. I just want to keep hearing that voice. You know, and every night after that, it was just like, everybody else went to bed. I'm going to go for a three hour long walk and I'm just going to talk to the Lord. You know, like, it's just going to spend time with him. And I couldn't get enough of it. You know, like, it's, it's kind of amazing because when I first got saved, I was invited to church by my sister. I wasn't looking for God. God was looking for me. And I went in, I had this encounter. God touched me. I shook like a shot squirrel in a Baptist church, I'm trembling (laughs) and I'm trying to get up to leave and the power of God falls on me. I'm overwhelmed with presence. And right then and there, I knew my sins were forgiven. No one had to invite me to church. I just, from that day forward, started going to church. But then I got hooked up with this gentleman who taught me how to pray. And his, his words to me was, prayer is a lifestyle. It's an assignment. You don't you don't just pray for an allotted period of time. He says, you pray until the spirit says you're finished. And so I thought that most people prayed for two, three hours at a time because that's what I started doing. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. It seems like prophetically we're very similar that we like to go on these long walks. We like to go on these journeys and these trips where we just get lost in his what? Yeah. His presence. presence. So... So that's, that's very, what we have similar right there, you know, and then from there I'd drive in my truck, I'd go take pictures of, of houses and people and whatever my assignment was for that day. And what I would do is I would always just stay in prayer. And so my truck was my prayer closet. That's awesome. And so I just spent hour after hour praying. And so what would you say if there's someone watching and they are they know they have a prophetic gift. What would be the first thing that you would encourage them to be steadfast in? Mm. I, would, I would encourage anyone who knows that you have a prophetic gift and you want to grow in that, or you are, you know the Lord's calling you into that ministry, but you haven't seen opportunities yet. Would, it would be just connect with the heart of God every day. And not just, you know, and not, not just in the sense of like, I'm ministering to somebody prophetically, but like personally, you and God, you know, because that's where everything I believe is going to grow out of. You know, it's like Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Right. And then he also said, I'm the vine. You're the branches. You know, if you're not connected to the vine, you can't bear much fruit. You're not going to be bearing any fruit at all. And, you know, it's like that to me is it's just we see it over and over and over in Scripture, too. You know, where we just see how God has called somebody to do something. And this is a word I got for tonight, I think, so I'm not going to go full into it. But God calls someone to something, and then he gives them, like, all of these stepping stones along the way. And a lot of times they look like hurdles or obstacles. But the whole point of it was so that they didn't get ahead of themselves, you know, and jumping into what God called them to. And instead it was just like, no, you're going to meet with me here, right where we are, you know. That's why Jesus said, okay, like, I'm calling you disciples. Let's go, you know, like, let's go change the world. Now follow me around for three years, right? You know, instead of go out and do, you know, it's like follow me around and, and see what I do and learn to, to speak the way I speak. And it's just, you know, it's like he wanted a relationship with them and then everything else, else birthed out of that. I love that because 
it reminds me when Jesus called the disciples, they were, many of them were already successful in their own fields. Yeah. They were, they were, they were well off or they were well on their way. And when they came and heard Jesus, the Messiah say, hey, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. You know what they had to do? They had to let go of everything they knew. And from that first call, they had to step into the unknown. That's what the prophetic is. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's you letting go of everything that you know right, yeah. to step into the unknown journey. Uh -huh. And you don't know what tomorrow holds, but prophetically you know that you're secure. That sounds so crazy because they're right. stepping out of financial success, they're leaving their family, they're leaving their security, and they're stepping into what we call the unknown realm. But in that unknown realm, they know that they're what? Their life is secure, that they are in his hand. Right. That's what the prophetic journey is really about. It's about letting go of what, <clears throat> what makes you comfortable mm -hmm. and learning to be comfortable in the unknown. But the unknown is known because his name is Jesus. His, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God. And we know that he what holds us up. Yeah. He's the lifter of our head, the keeper of our soul. He is the, the anchor of our life, the root that, that goes deep. He's the one that will, will give us the power to stand through a thing that sometimes we think we're going to fail in. And so what I want to do is I just really want to encourage you that if you have this prophetic gift, it is easy to, to say, Lord, I, I trust what I have. But the greater, the greater faith is, Lord, I trust you with all that you have placed before me. Mm. That's a good word. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I think, yeah, for me, one of the, you know, God's asked me to do many crazy things that, that I, at the time I thought were crazy. And then looking back, I was like, that, I, now I even think it was more crazy, you know, like looking back at it. But what I realized, you know, like after the fact, a lot of times is the thing that got me to say yes and to step into that was you, like the relationship I've built with you, the one who's telling me to do this. That was it. You know, it was like, this sounds crazy. It sounds nuts, you know, like that. And, but the only thing I know is the one who's telling me to do this, I can trust him. And so I'm going to do it, you know, like, and then I, you know, it's just like every complete release, you know, complete, like jumping that, that cliff and letting him catch you essentially. And yeah, knowing that you're taking a leap of faith, but you're not going to fall, you're going to rise. Right. It's, yeah. it's stepping out into the unknown knowing that everything is going to be okay. Yeah. So what's the craziest thing that you've ever had to step out in? Oh my gosh. Okay. The cra one of the craziest things I, I, I failed at, so I'm not even going to share that, but <laughs> what, uh, a crazy thing. So this was like a turning point for me where it was like, God was asking me to do prophetic ministry online, like public and share public words about current events, national news, things like that, where I'm just like, I was very uncomfortable. I was kicking and screaming the whole way in, you know, like, I was like, God, I don't want to do this. He kept telling me, I'm telling you to do this. I'm like, all right. And I remember this one day where I was, I was laying on my living room floor and I'm just like praying, you know, and I'm, I'm praising the Lord. It was the middle of the day. I was like on my lunch break, you know, and I'm praising the Lord. And this was back in 2020, I think. Yeah, it was back in 2020. And the Lord gave me uh, this vision about, uh, and I, what I saw was I saw a vulture and an eagle. And I was like, okay, I see this vulture and this eagle. And the eagle was like morphing into a vulture, Right. And I was like, I don't know what this means. So I got up, I go for a walk. And on the walk, I hear this voice say, and this was weird to me because normally I hear God, you know, internal. internal. But it, I heard this voice as if it was like a newscaster from the next room over. But you, it was, sounded like in a newsroom or something like that. And what I heard was this phrase that said, uh, very specifically, it was like Russian oil prices are going to skyrocket in November. And I was like... What? Like, I was like, Lord, this is very specific, you know? And yeah. I, got, I got a little scared because I'm like, God, if you're asking me to say this, I need a lot of confirmation. You know, like, I can't, I'm just not going to post this. You know, like, I need to know this is God, right? And, and, it was, and I heard it differently than normal, too. So I'm like, that, you know, like, that's weirding me out. And so I just said, Lord, you know, you know, anything you ask me to do, I'm going to do. But if this is something you want me to share, I need, obviously, the word to go with it. I don't just want the word of knowledge without the, the prophecy, you know, without the encouragement or the word or the teaching. But also, I need confirmation. And then the Holy Spirit said very specifically, and this was the voice I was used to, right? And he said, on this walk, you're going to see a bird that resembles an eagle, that has the appearance of an eagle. And I've never seen an eagle in the part of Texas that I'm from, never seen one in the wild or anything like that. And so I just said, okay, Lord, if I see that, I know this is you, right? You know, like, I know this is God. 
And so I keep going down the walk, and at this one point, the, the trail turns to the left like a hard left, right, 90 degree. And right as it's turning, I'm about to turn, and the Lord just says, walk off the trail right here. So I walk off the trail, and I, I stop, and there's a river in front of me, and he says, look up. I look up. As soon as I look up, this big old bird comes out of the trees across the river and flies down over the river and, like, right towards me. And it was a big, massive bird, a brown bird with a white head, like a bald eagle. Wow. Yeah, and I'm seeing this thing, and I've never seen anything like this where I'm from, ever. And I'm just like, whoa. You know, like, and so I, like, turn around, and I ran home, right? And so I run home, and I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. And I looked it up later, and I found out that, like, where I'm from, they actually, we don't have a lot of bald eagles, but we have what they call a white-headed hawk. And wow. it looks like an eagle, right? And, that and was I looked at, and that's what I had seen was, and I was like, this is what I saw. It was a white headed hawk. It looked just like the eagle. Yeah, but it wasn't an eagle. And, and I was like, and I, and so I sit down on the couch and I'm like, Lord, I just need a little bit more confirmation, right? <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I know, I know I just, what I just saw, but can you just help me out a little bit, right? I was like, I just want to be sure about this. And, and so the Lord gave me a chapter, and I, now I'm, I'm, I'm not going to remember the chapter. I believe it might be Matthew 24, where Jesus is, talks about the, where the vultures will gather. Or no, where, where the eagles gather his body. Yeah, yeah. where, where the bodies are, the, the eagles will gather, or vultures will gather. Yeah, yeah the, it's the eagles, yeah. Right. His, his, his eagles will gather where the body lies. Yeah, well, here's the crazy thing. It's eagles half the time, it's vultures the other half of the time. And what I had just seen was a vision of an eagle morphing into a vulture. And I looked up all the translations online, you know. Half the time they translated eagles, the other time, half of the time is translated vultures. Mm. And I was like, this is like the only place in scripture where yeah. that you got an eagle that is a vulture, essentially. And they, they're not, the, you know, the translators obviously, you know, land on one side or the other. And the Lord out of that gave me a word about like what was about to happen in the U.S. in the coming year where it's like my people are soaring like an eagle, but they're like, they're in about to go down to where the vultures are. You know, they're going to go for the leftovers instead of for the live meat, right? That live kill. And I was just like, man, you know, like, and yeah. And it's like, and, and so I ended up sharing it. And sure enough, you know, like we have, you know, the, the video that we posted showing what happened with the, you know, with the Russian oil prices and everything in November and how they skyrocketed, like for the next, you know, starting in the, at the beginning of November, like 30% rise in November. And then from there it went like all the way to like, what was it like March of 2022 or something? It just kept going, Jeez. you know, like, and that's where it started. And so, yeah, it's just, just crazy. But, you know, in the moment it was like, to me, I was like, this is so uh, honestly like unsettling the idea of, of sharing something like this and not being right. You yeah. know, that it's like, I need, I need to know Lord that that was you, you know, and that's the same thing that Gideon said, you know, I just, I'm always, I'm always getting down on Gideon in the, in the scripture. But at the same time, I'm like, I understand kind of now a little bit. <laughs> Because an angel comes to Gideon, and he's like, you know, I, you're like mighty man, man of valor. Like, I'm gonna lead, I'm, God's going to use you to, like, lead the children of Israel into victory. And he's, he, like, hears this message from an angel, right? Yeah. And then after that, he's like, God, can you just tell me if that was you or not? You know, like, yeah. I just need some confirmation. It's like an angel just came and visited you. You know, like, right. what, do you, what else he do you He throws need? out some fleeces. Right. right. But then God, like, answers his request. You know, you why, know? You know why I discovered is because God so loves us and God so wants us to fulfill the will. Yeah. That he is going to he's going to leave that breadcrumb for us right. so we could step into it. That's that place of stepping out of the unknown into that place of certainty. They, we all need breadcrumbs like you know that little trail it's like is this you is this me is this you is this me mm -hmm. you know and then usually what happens he'll he'll coax us out in that last part we have to just kind of take that jump. I'll never forget that one of the greatest prophetic experiences in my life was uh, God told me I had just got given a brand new camera for my birthday. I mm -hmm. loved my camera. It was everything to me. It was what I was believing God for. He put it on my neck. I only had it, God, not even but like a month and a half, two months. It's brand oh, stinking new. <laughs> and I'll never forget I was dating my wife now, Juanita, she was my fiance, and I told her, I said, I have this burning desire to go to Southern California. I never wanted to go to Southern California. I'm a Northern California guy, grew up saying things like, I hate LA, you know, because I'm a Giants fan and Raider fan and, you know, LA, we're rivals. And so yeah. I have this burning desire to go. So I buy a last minute plane ticket, I catch a, a ride, down from LAX all the way to Orange County to go and sit in a service of a man that I've never heard preach. And I get there and 
suddenly he's preaching a message that day called Lay Down Your Isaac. No, no. And he's talking about <laughs> sacrificing something <laughs> that is that is costly. Yeah. And he preaches how Abraham laid down his son. And so <laughs> that day he said these words. He says, I want you to pray and hear God. And if you hear God challenge you to let something go, don't be afraid to say yes. Oh, and I'm like, man. and I'm thinking, <laughs> praise the Lord, I got a pocket full of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the Lord says these words. He says, son, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord, with all my heart. <laughs> And I'm thinking he's going to say, like, get 50 bucks, get 100 right. bucks, you know. And he says, will you give me your camera? Yeah. And the first words you want to say is what? Get thee behind me, Satan, you know. Yeah. You know I'm it's, hearing the devil right now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but like you said, it wasn't a voice that came out of left field. Right. It was a voice that just resonated You knew deep, it was him. And yeah. I knew it was him. Yeah. Because I had heard that voice many times. Right. And he said, will you give me your camera? Mm -hmm. And so it was like as soon as I said yes and wrote it on the envelope and placed it into the offering basket as it went by. It felt like an eternity for that moment, but I had to be obedient radically, and so I threw it in. And it was like, as it went by, the voice of the Lord came back to me a second time, and he said, son, do you love me? And I was like, oh my God, yes, Lord, I just gave you my camera. <laughs> this is my most prized possession. I have nothing greater. And then he says, will you give me all of your camera equipment. Oh, man. And so now you're talking about a $5,000 investment. Wow. I'm giving away, I mean, backdrops, filters, you name it, uh, two and a quarter cameras, lenses. I mean, I have everything. This is my profession. This is my career right. to be. This is everything I want. And he said, will you give it to me? Oh, man. And so <laughs> with a little hesitancy, hesitancy, but yet radical obedience, I said yes, and I write it out and I put it into the envelope. I tell the usher, this goes with another one. Mm -hmm. When this comes up, this goes with it. And sure enough, the pastor takes out these, these cards and he starts reading Bible trivia question. And he said, all the gifts and proceeds that came in today, he said, I believe they are purpose for somebody here. This is not for the church. This is for God's people to be blessed. We're going to see how God is going to do these miracles tonight. <clears throat> and so he started reading off these questions. And I'm like, praise the Lord. In my mind, in my heart, my spirit, man, I'm like rejoicing because I think there's an outside chance that this is nothing but a test. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hoping, willfully hoping that, yeah. oh, okay, I laid it all down, but he loves me so much he's going to give it all back. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, you know, come on, Jesus, you know, that, <laughs> that mysterious hope. And so I'll never forget when he comes to the camera that I'm giving away. He says these words. He said, oh, that's too easy of a question. He said, this is a really nice camera. And, and then the usher hands him. He goes, wow, this is like $5,000 worth of stuff. Let me And he filters through a few cards. He goes, this is a great question. I know this question by heart. I could still hear him and see him reading the card, holding the microphone in his hand and getting on his tippy toes because that's what he did. And so he's like, wow. And this is the question he asked and I'll throw it out to see if any of you know it. He said, who are the only two men in the Bible that had their wives given to another? My hand is halfway up and I go like this, I don't know. So my hand oh. starts slowly coming down and there's one lady in the whole church. This church, there's 12, 1,500 people. She's jumping up and down. I know, I know. And I'm like, no, you don't know, you don't know. Let him ask a second question. Oh my gosh. And sure enough, he goes, he acts like he don't see her. And then he's like, you. And he calls her out and she goes, I know it, I know it. You know who they are? David and I don't know who else. Yeah, you started saying it. It starts with a mess. You started right. to say it. I thought you had it on your tongue. David and Samson. I'll oh, never Samson. forget okay, that. Yeah. I'll never forget that. And she goes, it's David and Samson. It's, it's David like, oh and Samson. Gosh. She gets super excited. And guess what happens? He's like, praise the Lord. That's amazing. You knew this answer. And he says, the camera is here. Who's the young man giving away the camera? I raise my hand. He calls me to her. And he says, just, you could give it to her right now. Toughest thing I oh ever did. Oh, my gosh. That's I remember awesome. taking it off of my neck with oh tears no. in my eyes. She's crying. I'm crying. She's crying in elation. I'm crying in like, oh, my God, what am I really doing? And then I explained to her all this stuff, and she's going nuts. 
she's going so nuts that the pastor goes, okay, okay, why is this so exciting to you? And she's yelling, God is so faithful. God is so faithful. God is so faithful. And he goes, okay, tell me why. She said, I am a missionary. I am a school teacher. And over the summer, I go and I dedicate three months to go to Mongolia to minister, to teach education and pour out my heart and my life into these people and teach them wow. not just how to read and write, but the word of God. That's and she awesome. said, and I've been praying for the very best camera equipment That's so awesome. to be given to me so I could document this. Wow. And now I'm kind of mad because <laughs> I flew from... Southern California, buy myself a last second ticket, drive another hour and 15, 20 minutes to get all the way to this service only to give my camera to her. And I'm like, isn't there anyone in Orange County that has a nice camera that could have been obedient, heard God's voice and given it that God had to send me from, <laughs> from <Yeah. laughs> on a six hour journey to get there to give it to her? Wow. And right then and there, I knew that God was up to something greater. So she's crying because she's receiving the very best. But this is what she said that I'll never forget. I still remember her name. Her name is Sharon Hayes. We've remained friends through all these years. That's awesome. Sharon Hayes said these words. She said, God is so good. Every day I work at the local high school, I lay my hands on the photography department as I walk through the hallway, I lay my hand on the doorway that says photography and I declare that God will give me the very best. That's and you awesome. know what the Lord told me? He said, he said, Rob, I had asked others, but I found one that was willing and obedient to sacrifice. Wow. I think what we're both talking about here is this. Prophetic people not only hear God's voice, but they're willing to sacrifice all mm -hmm. to stay in relationship with God. Yeah. And so I'm telling you today that if you love the Lord and he's calling you into a prophetic ministry, doesn't matter if it's a prophet, spirit of prophecy, gift of prophecy, the lifestyle of the prophetic requires that you are willing to lay things down. Trust the Lord, even in that uncertain place, come to the place of certainty that God will not let you fail, yeah. but will lead you through. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is trust, you know, and I've, probably for me, one of the big things that the Lord is, has asked me to lay down honestly has been the idea of self-image, you know, like how people see me. I mean, because he's asked me to give other things away, sure. But like for me, the, the hardest thing has been, Lord, what I really wanted what I, was I wanted to be mainstream. I wanted to be respected. I wanted theologians to think I knew what I was talking about. You know, like I wanted that. Like that's what I wanted. And throughout the years, the Lord's been saying, no, 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 you know, the whole time. And like, I'm like, but Lord, <laughs> you know, I could have made it in that space, you know, like, and the Lord's like, no, that's not what I made you for. And, you know, so for me, that has a lot of times been the Isaac has been like, what are people going to think, you know, or what is this person going to think as soon as I share this with them? Right. And, and I, I've really connected with the people in scripture that have had to lay those things down, you know, like lay that, that image down. I mean, Jesus, obviously Jesus is like the main one, you know, yeah. where it's just like, he didn't care what anybody thought about him. You know, and it's like, how did, I, I've always wondered, like, how did he walk around not, literally not caring what anybody thought? It's like all the time he just said what God told him, what the Father was telling him to say, you know, without any concern of repercussion of, you know, fear for his life. You know, I mean, there's multiple times where like a, he gets dragged up to a hill, they're going to throw him off and, or stone him, you know, and he's like... <laughs> you know, I'm good. He's I'm like, protected. I'm, I'm fine. Covered. He doesn't freak out. Yeah, he's like, I'm fine, y'all. Like, you know, I'm sure in those moments, if the, if the disciples were there, they were probably losing their minds, you know. But, uh, but yeah, it's just like he, all the time it was like he was willing to say exactly what God was asking him to say. And the key to that was the Holy Spirit. You know, it was like walking in the Spirit. That's exactly what he was doing all the time. He was modeling it for us. And that's what I've learned is like the moments where I can get out of the flesh and I can realize, you know what? When Jesus died, I died too. You know, I was crucified with Christ and I don't, I don't own my flesh anymore. I'm not associated with that anymore. You know, that's not me anymore. Like I am a spirit man now. Like I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. And if I can follow him, you know, then it's like, okay, what, what's on the other side of that sacrifice? You lose a friend, you know, because they feel like you shared something weird with them or whatever. You know, it's like you, you lose a friend or you lose this thing or whatever. It's like all of those things you, that you need, it's like you have in him when you're walking in the spirit. 
Like I already have those things. So the more that you see, the more that we realize that, the more we see like, you know, the word says we are complete in Christ. Like in him, we've been made complete. It's like the more that you realize that every spiritual blessing is yours in Christ Jesus. It's like, I've got that exactly what I need in that friendship. And so I can step out and I can sacrifice this thing that normally would be hard, you know, normally be difficult because even if I lose that, I've already got it. You know, like I've already got it in him. And there's, a, there's a, actually a verse that the Lord pointed me to. I'm going to read it if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, <clears throat> so Romans 8, 2, it says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. death. So a lot of times that law, you know, of, of sin and death, a lot of times we associate that with running around and doing bad things, right? You know, like living in sin over here or not listening to the Lord and, and you know, breaking his commandments, things like that. But that can even be applied to simply not walking by the Spirit. You know, it's just simply like the Holy Spirit wanting to be the one who leads you around, wanting to be, you know, the one that is like always there with you, always telling you like, hey, let's go down this path, not that path. Or wanting to be the one that literally tells you like, hey, this thing that you always wanted, it's not good for you. (laughs) You know, like I've got something better, you know, like. Absolutely. And And when we're not willing to listen, like. Man, that is, that's what this is talking about. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is believing that the life I have in Jesus is better. Absolutely. And the hardest thing for most people to let go of is their desire of what they want. Yeah. Because the scripture says, the Lord will give me the desires of my heart. Yeah, it's really the desire. Your heart is not your own. Right. Your heart belongs to him. So you got to learn to surrender your heart to him. Mm-hmm. And in him, he'll give you his desires, right. which ultimately should be your desires. Right. And so that's the hardest thing to do is to just surrender that will and surrender that place and say, you know what, Lord, I fully and absolutely trust you. Yeah. And that's just an amazing process to walk out and to learn. It's an amazing place to come to through what I would call radical obedience. Mm-hmm. Because that's really what you're talking about is learning how to be obedient to the Spirit. So watch how, how God positions. Because He's so full of love, Jesus would always say that I must leave here so God can send you another. Mm. And so before he, he dies, He tells His disciples to go what? To go tarry in a specific place. Mm-hmm. Go tarry in Jerusalem. Then he tells them to go wait in an upper room. Yeah. So he positions them to what? To have an encounter. So right now, I think this is what God is using, the prophetic voices that I know. I know that he's using men of God such as yourself to help reposition the body of Christ, to bring people into the place where the power Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit could come. See, I don't think... Well, let me say it like this. There's not one disciple in the Bible that was used of God that was not filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if every disciple was filled with the Holy Spirit, Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not something that's for an elect few. It's for all. You can't really be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. You can be, but the Holy Spirit... Let me say it like this. The Holy Spirit comes when Jesus comes into your life. Mm-hmm. What you have to do is recognize the Spirit of Christ lives inside of you. Right. And then the Holy Spirit will come in power, in demonstration. Yeah. So we understand the Spirit fell upon them. And why did it fall? It fell because he gave them a twofold manifested purpose. The purposes that he gave to each and every one of us is what? That, <clears throat> that when... We receive the Holy Spirit, we would become witnesses, and then we would become a people that demonstrate power. Yeah. Right now, what is one of the biggest crises that is taking place at large in America is there is a church that has no power. Mm. And a church with no power is a church that is probably, safe to say, out of a position. They're not tearing where they need to be. Yeah. And when we get to where we need to be through radical obedience, through the yes that we give through the heart of God, saying yes to his command, yes 
to his will. Yes, the steps of the righteous are ordered of God. Yes, to his orders. When we get lined up, you want to know what happens? Power, presence, glory, goodness, manifestation, signs, wonders all take place. Mm. And so would you say that you spend a lot of time praying in the spirit? And, yeah. and if so, why? Because I think there's so many people that don't know why. That's such a good question. Yeah, that's such a good question. I I heard this word as you're speaking first. There's somebody listening right now, and you have this desire in your heart where you're saying, what you're saying is, I want to be known for the prophetic. And I just heard the Lord say, he wants you to want to be known for knowing him. Mm. Like, that's what he wants for you. He wants you to be known for knowing him. And the prophetic will come out of that. And we see that, uh, you know, in... uh, we see that in uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, with Moses, you've got the man who sat with God and talked. It says he was with God face to face as with a friend, right? And then we see that Moses, like, writes the Torah, right? It's like he was a prophet of God. He was also God's chosen deliverer for the children of Israel during that time. But we see a weird thing happen in Numbers chapter 11, I think, where it says that God takes a part of the spirit that's on Moses and puts it on these other guys, these other leaders, Seven right? the elders. Yeah. And they all start to prophesy as soon as that happens. As soon as the Holy Spirit hits them, you know, they start to prophesy. And there's two guys in the, tent, in the camp that didn't come, you know, and the Spirit hits them too. They were supposed to be there. They were invited, right? They didn't come out of the camp to the tent. And they get hit and they start prophesying inside the camp. And somebody runs out and to tell Joshua, Like, hey, there's two guys in here prophesying, you know, and Joshua turns to Moses and he's like, we should probably stop this, right? There's two guys over here prophesying. And Moses is like, no, don't stop them. I wish that all of God's people would prophesy. And then Paul says the same thing in the New Testament. He says, I wish you all would prophesy, you know, and it's like the limited Holy Spirit in the old covenant, under the old covenant that had been poured out. It says that he takes part of the spirit from Moses and gives it to everybody else, right? It's like, it's not, he's not limited anymore. You know, because of what Jesus did, it's not like, okay, here's a little bit for you. Here's a little bit for you. You know, like Acts chapter two says in the last days, I will pour forth my spirit, says the Lord. You know, your, your old men and women will dream dreams. Your young men and women will have visions. And it's like, you'll prophesy. Like that's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes. It's not the only thing that happens, you know, but it's one of the things that happens (laughs) most of the time it happens. I mean, even the, the Holy Spirit even hits you know, Saul, when he's chasing David, and he falls down and goes nuts, right? Right? And he starts prophesying, and he wasn't even following after God. It was just a sign of when the Holy Spirit came, you know? Like, that's what starts happening. He couldn't even help it. Yeah. And, well, and, ahead, and my only point is, you know, a lot of times we want the gift, and we don't realize that the, what causes the gift to come is the gift giver. Yes, sir. And when you just go into that secret place with the Lord, and you just remain there, It's like, you can't help but prophesy. (laughs) You know, it just comes. Even if you're a Saul in that moment, you get into the presence of the Lord, sometimes you're going to start prophesying, you know? Absolutely. Because the prophetic is so contagious. Yeah. You know, because it's it's atmosphere, it's presence, it's it's the word. Mm -hmm. The word never returns void, but the word will fountain, it'll bubble, and it'll come forth. Right. You know, my first prophetic word was given by a Balaam prophet. (laughs) You know, So you're saying somebody that wasn't walking with God, right? that my teacher that prophesied into my life, he was a Balaam. He believed in all kinds of spirit, but that day when he prophesied over my life, the Holy Spirit grabbed hold of his tongue, he prophesied, and he actually literally said the word behind me. He literally said these words. He said, Rob... You are some type of evangelist. At 10 years of your photography career, you'll come to a crossroad. You'll lay down your camera equipment. You will never pick it up again. This is right before I got saved, like weeks. And he says, matter of fact, you're some type of evangelist. You are an oracle. Fancy word for prophet. Right. Had no idea what an oracle was. (laughs) He said, you're some type of evangelist. You're an oracle. You'll travel the nations of the world. The nations of the world will seek you out because you'll convey a message that comes from your heart. I was like, whatever. (laughs) And two, three weeks later, I get radically saved. And all I want to do is now be radically obedient. And according to his word, at 10 years of my photography career, guess what I did? I laid down my camera equipment. And in probably just a few months after, the Spirit of the Lord came to me a third time. And he said these words, son, do you love me? 
And you know when you hear something eerily familiar, <laughs> like, I've heard this like, before. I remember. I remember. <laughs> I remember. And it literally took me right back to the altar when I'm giving away my camera equipment to this lady. She's crying. I'm crying for two different reasons. And I was like, yes, Lord, I gave you my camera and I gave you all my camera equipment. And so he says it th three times to me that day. And so, you know, I'm reminding him, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And finally I say, Lord, you know. Yeah. And he says these words. He said, will you give me your job? Uh -huh. Now it's the fulfillment of that prophetic word. And I lay down all my camera equipment. I lay down my job. I said yes to the call of God. Wow. Not knowing he was calling me to be a prophet, but I said yes to the call of God in the form of ministry. And then God developed the whole prophetic in my life. And I was just like, from that day, I was like, okay, you yeah. know. Here we go. And it was a step into the unknown. Mm. It was a step into an adventure that now has been with me for 28 years, 26 years in full-time ministry, 29 years now, salvation. And so it's like, it's, it's an amazing journey. <laughs> the obedience to the call of God, the yes to God, there mm -hmm. is no greater filling. And I think prophetically, there's so many people that want to be known, as you said, for their gifting. The Bible says that gifts are given without repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, across the street, we have a medium, you know. Right. And she parked right next to the prophetic. Why? Because there is an atmosphere of prophecy right here that out of all the places she could have put her shop, mm -hmm. she put it right across. Because we know that the counterfeit is always going to position itself right next to the real. Right. We see that with the story in the book of Acts when Paul cast the demon out of that servant girl, mm -hmm. you know, and what happens? You know, he's an unclean spirit, leave her, and now Paul and Silas are thrown into prison because Paul did something good, right. <laughs> you know? And, and that's what we see today, that, you know, you can't be afraid to open your mouth and confront things. You can't be afraid to be put away, but what does mm -hmm. God do? You know, he... He allows these men to not lose their praise. They enter into a time of singing and worship, and then the earth shakes, the prison doors open, not just for them, but for all who are locked up. Yeah. So your worship frees more than yourself. It frees those that are in prison, those that are in bondage around you, sets them free, and then what happens next? Paul and Silas end up at the jail, jailer's house, and that whole family gets saved. So watch this. <clears throat> you know, it seems like what they went through is unfortunate, but God knew that the only way to get them there is to lock them up to get this family set free. Mm. He, he had the jailer in mind even when Paul was casting out that, that devil in that young lady. Wow. So yeah. he, God's mind is so far ahead of where our mind is. We think time, place, and space. God thinks, <laughs> he thinks, you know, completion of the picture. He thinks finished work. He right. thinks the end. Isaiah 46, 10, he declared the end from the beginning. And so I think, you know, for those of us that are online, if you have any questions, maybe we'll take a few questions. I mean, my goodness, time is just evaporating. We've been on for like 45 minutes. Oh, and really? It seems like just a moment. I know. So, I I'm not even paying attention to the time. So. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, my gosh. But is there anything in your heart that you would like to share, you know, yeah, to, to I, anybody online or just something you have in your spirit that yeah, God's as saying? Yeah, as you're Talking about, you know, giving up that job, I really sense there was somebody listening who is in the opposite space where God is asking you to stay at the position that you're at, you know, and you've been asking the Lord, you've been saying, and I, and like, when I heard this, I'm like, I'm feeling for you right now because I was in this space for a long time, you know, where it's just like every day was a grind and I'm just asking the Lord, like, Lord, when can I give up this job? Because I know you've called me into ministry, right? I know you've called me into this thing, but I'm doing this other thing right now. And every day the Lord would tell me, every time I would pray, the Lord would say, nope, this is where I want you right now. This is where I want you right now. So the sacrifice was a daily thing and it wasn't giving up that thing. It was giving up the thing I wanted, you know, and I really feel like that's from the Lord for someone that the Lord is asking you to stay where you are. And now don't just take this and run with it without getting confirmation that this is for you, but that the Lord is asking you to stay where you are because there's still a season of teaching. And I just hear the word growth right now. Yes. There's a season of growth for you where you are. And the Lord's going to start implementing those things. And I'm not getting this for someone specific, so maybe it's for a lot of people. But the Lord's going to start implementing these things in your life that He's going to use later on in a greater way. But during this season, He's going to teach you how He actually wants to work those things out in your life. So uh, my encouragement to you would be to find the scriptures that deal with trust in the Lord, that deal with the, I cried out to the Lord and he answered me, because that's where your strength is going to be found. In, look, I'm, like, I'm still where I don't want to be, 
but I have joy in knowing the one who's with me. I have joy in being able to trust that he has a good plan. I have joy in literally just having his presence with me. You know, I was, that season I was talking about where I was going through all of that, you know, uh, just crying out to the Lord saying, when is this, when can I move on, right? When can I move on? You know, when I moved on, it was when I finally, like years into that season where I finally got to the point where I just said, Lord, man, if your presence comes while I'm working, that, this is going to be the best job and I'll work this for the rest of my life. You know, like it was just like, this is going to be awesome. Once you, know? you submitted to it. Yeah. I just like turned worship music on and I just started working harder than ever, you know? And then God said, okay, time to move on. <laughs> And I was like, what? <laughs> You're like, I just found joy in my job. Right, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I could literally say that when God asked me to lay down my job, it was not at a convenient moment. Yeah. When he asked me to let it go, I was engaged. That was the sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah. I went from making money and putting away for my wedding to all of a sudden, how am I going to pay for my wedding? Because I just yeah. quit my job. My, my in-laws-to-be thought I was absolutely insane. And I was. I don't highly recommend that to anybody, you know, because <laughs> they're sending their daughter into my hands to care for her. And they're like, how are you going to care for her? You ain't got a job, you know? And I'm right. like, I trust the Lord. They're like, <laughs> in Spanish, they probably want to call me bendejo, you know? <laughs> for those of you that know Spanish, that just means unwise one. We'll leave it at that. So they're thinking, oh my God. But I guarantee you now, as they have seen what God has done in by and through mine and their daughter's life, they're like, man, this was the journey that God set for them. Yeah. And they're changing and transforming lives. And so that's what I love about the prophetic, so cool. man. It is a life changing word that brings hope to a people. Uh, if you feel like you have the spirit of prophecy, just remember, God did not put you in the earth to prophesy condemnation. He puts you in it according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you are speaking prophetically to people of the church, you speak edification, exhortation, or comfort. Mm -hmm. You know, the word to edify means to build up or to raise the roof, to transform yeah. the way a man thinks of himself. The word to exhort means to keep one from falling into a ditch or a hole. Mm -hmm. You exhort them. It's a strong correction, but it means to literally lean on someone so they mm. miss that area of fault. Wow. You know, and then lastly, to bring comfort means to soothe. And so sometimes the greatest word is not a word. It's your affection and your love mm. that comes out of the spirit of God. Sometimes you just got to learn to sit by someone that's grieving. You know, you can't, you can't minister to them in their grief or their pain, but you could minister presence and just love them, be an arm, be an extension, be a hug when they need it. Let them know it's okay to cry and, and let the spirit of God soothe. Sometimes, you know, they, they, they said this is in photography, a picture is worth a thousand words. And so if you could just become a picture of Christ to them physically, wow, you're yeah. speaking words of affirmation, healing that make them go, I'm going to be okay. And so, <clears throat> you know, there is a Hermina Galvez. I just saw you online and you said, I'm ready to quit. She, she said, I already quit. I thought he said to go. I think she's talking about the job. Yeah. You know, if, if God was telling you to quit, then you need to quit. You know, it, it all just comes down to what God was saying to you personally. There you go. So just because I'm sharing that word for some people listening, like you need to make sure and if it's yep. for a general audience like that, it's not for a specific person. Make sure the Holy Spirit is confirming that to you because it might not be for you, uh, Herminia, because, yeah, sometimes the Lord will, will share a word that's generally for a lot of people listening, but you've got, you really got to hear from the Lord for yourself before you run with that, or you got to get a confirmation. You know, I've done that sometimes where it's just like someone will say something from a stage and I'm like, oh man, like, and I try to put that conviction on myself, you know, or, or, and, you know, and it turns into condemnation when you try to do it to yourself. Yep. But it's like, no, now you have to take that and you need to submit it to the Holy Spirit in prayer, you know, and you need to let the Lord, because if it's something that's for you, then God is going to, he's going to grow that, you know, he's going to, he's going to overshadow that. The presence of God is going to be on it. He's going to confirm it. If it's not, then he's going to let you know, nope, that's not for you in this season. That's, you know, that was a word for somebody else. So no, yeah, just make sure, you know, that it's the Lord. And one of the things I love about about Troy is this, is everything he says, he refers back to prayer, confirmation. He always refers you back to the word because the word interprets the word. I know yeah. there's many people that are starting to put up and saying, you know, how do I know if I'm praying in tongues or praying in my flesh? 
Well, your flesh won't pray in tongues, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> your, your, your flesh won't pray in tongues, you know. <laughs> it, it's a gift of the Spirit. So your flesh, your flesh will keep you from praying in tongues because you'll think right. this is not God. But the Bible says that when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying mm-hmm. as the Lord wills. So it's you surrendering yourself into this unknown language, knowing that the Spirit is what? Praying on your behalf and moving mountains for you and you didn't even realize it. So, you know, I encourage people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember, when you, here's the thought, when Jesus came into your life, you received him. Mm -hmm. Jesus and the Holy Ghost are a package. It's just an awareness that the Holy Ghost lives in you. I'll never forget, here's a simple truth about prophecy. When you move in the spirit of prophecy, and there are some people that say, oh, I don't prophesy. Well, I beg to differ because if Christ is in you, you're going to testify about his name. Mm. The Bible says, Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Christ Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if you ever talk about Jesus, you're really speaking a prophetic word into an atmosphere, to a people, to your friend, to a family member. Have you ever, have you ever wore a Christian shirt that has the word written on it? You know, like be shady. You know, when people look at that, they're like, be shady. They, they always kind of look at it with a frown. But then they read the verse and then they ask me, well, what do you think it means? And it's, it's simple. When Peter walked down the street, it says they brought all those that were lame and sick and set them out on the street corner, hoping that he walked by and that his shadow would be cast. The word shadow means to shade. The word shade means to bring relief to someone who's hurting. So that's exactly what the word does. It brings relief to someone that's hurting to change and transform their life. And so what we're trying to do is just make everyone aware of what God is saying and doing and how he wants to manifest. So the spirit of prophecy will manifest in the form of your prayer. If you pray and you quote a scripture over someone, you're prophesying. Mm -hmm. If you take a blank card and you write a scripture in it, you're prophesying. If you if you pick up a cup from a place like In and Out or even uh, Chick Fil A, all the scripture is written underneath it. You're picking up a prophetic declaration. I mean, if you go to a Hobby Lobby, they got Christian music playing. All the merchandise you buy has scripture. Uh, blended into it. And so you're actually become a billboard of prophecy by the clothes you wear. You know, people wear Nike. Nike's symbol means just do it. You know, it means the goddess of victory, but there is, there's only one God of true victory and it's Christ. So you're, you could actually be wearing something for the kingdom of God and not even be aware of it or be aware of it and don't realize it actually has a voice and it's speaking, you know? And so just want to let you and know. then you can redeem that, you know? Absolutely. Then, you, then, yeah, someone's like, oh, you like Nike? And they're like, let me tell you why. You know, exactly. like, and then, then you've got a, you got a message to share. So, so what we want to do is I also want to let you know that every Tuesday or Wednesday we have a podcast that we do or a video blog kind of. And what we do is it's called everything prophetic. Everything prophetic is just where we talk just like me and uh, prophet Troy have been about the things of God and prophetic and how it ministers, how God ministers prophetically in every environment to change and transform lives. Also want to let you know that our School of Prophetic Ministry will be kicking off in the new year, January the 17th. So if you're interested in growing in the prophetic, we're going to teach you foundational principles. We're going to teach you how to get the prophetic word into God parameters and learn how to give a sure word that is safe, that will minister and bring hope and life to everyone that hears it. And so we're really excited about this. We took a year off and we've revamped the whole program and now we're putting it live instead of in locations so we can train more people that want to grow in the prophetic. And so really excited about everything that God is doing uh, in, by, and through LIVG Ministries. We're learning and meeting more wonderful people such as Troy and others that are gonna just really help pour into what we're doing next. But is there anyone else you have? Any thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, just what you said about tongues. I'll just add this. This is something I like to say. It's kind of, it's kind of childish, you know. But the this is kind of the perspective the Lord has given me over the years. Is like because so many people ask that question, how do I know I'm not babbling, right? How do I know I'm praying in tongues for real? I'm not just babbling. 
and in my mind, it's like, okay, the gift of tongues is probably the most childlike gift, right? And this is kind of how the Lord has helped me to see it. It's like the most childlike, because you have to put yourself in this place where you don't know what you're saying, you know? Especially if you're praying in another, lang- another language, right? Not just praying by the Spirit. You're, you're literally like, I don't know what I'm saying. When a loving parent looks at their child and sees them trying to do something, right? They're not going to let them sit there and try for very long, you know? Because, like, if I see my, my son Julian, he's one year old, when I see him, I, I turn around, I'm like, you're one year old and you're trying to help me pick up the room? You know, he's like picking up the blocks and trying to put him in the thing. And I'm like, wow. And I just get down in there on the floor and I start picking up the blocks with him. I'm like, this is so, like, you're like warming my heart right now. Yes. You know, how long do you think God, your loving father, is going to sit there and let you, watch you babble? You know, it's like, even if it's not, it is. It becomes it very quickly because, and, and that should give you faith, you know, to know like, no, I'm just going to do it. And the Holy Spirit's going to speak through me, you know, because God, like, God asked me to do it. That's it. Like, it's in Scripture, it's there, I'm going to do it, and then the Lord's going to do it through me. You know? Absolutely. Like, and even if I feel childlike, I think that's what it is. Like, we don't want to feel foolish. We don't want to feel childish. It's like, let, just let your flesh die a little bit, and it's okay to feel childish. You know, like, and just go for it. And the Lord, and then you'll start to, you'll start to notice the manifestations of the Spirit come out of that. And you know what I think uh, a lot of things for people it's hard to do? It's to let go and trust God. Yeah. So it's really a place of your control. Yeah. And so what we need to do is learn how to let go. You know, you see different examples in the Old Testament and the New where people had to let go of something they were holding on to. Moses, what did God say? Throw down your staff. When he threw down the staff, what did it become? It became a serpent. He was Mm -hmm. afraid of it. And then God said, what? Don't be afraid of it. Pick it up by its tail. When he picked it up by the tail, what did he pick up? He picked up the end of the thing. Mm -hmm. But he also picked up the wisdom of God. The Bible says, be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. So what did Moses learn? He learned that he could pick up wisdom. So when you let go of something, you're going to learn you can pick up something greater. You know, the woman at the well, what did she do? She let go of the water pot that she drew from. Mm. And then she went into the city and said, come meet the man who filled me up with all things. And so now Jesus extended his stay and had a revival for, for extra days. You know? So sometimes you have to lose something and it be given back so you actually understand the power of what you have. You can see that again in 2 Kings chapter 6. A young man's cutting down the tree. The iron axe head falls off. Prophet throws what? A branch into the water. The, the iron head rises up and he yeah. says, reach out and take it. And the Bible said he took it. The word to take means to grab in the spirit of victory. So truly, sometimes you can't experience victory until you let go of what you thought you couldn't. And the moment you let go of that fear, the worry, the doubt, that insecurity, guess what? You pick up something far greater. That's why I love what we're doing with Everything Prophetic because that's the place where we answer so many prophetic questions and help people uh, understand their prophetic call, their prophetic journey a whole lot more. And so we got a few minutes left. So maybe you, you want to pick a couple people. We'll just pray for them. Sure. Yeah. And then great. I want to announce tonight, 7 p.m., Troy and myself. Troy is, I believe, is going to share a word. And if not, maybe I will. If not, we're <laughs> going to prophesy because there's too much in him. And I can't wait to kind of ring him out a little bit like people do to me. <laughs> but pull on him and just let him release the word. We're going to have people in the studio audience as well as those of you online. And we're going to be um, on our YouTube channel at Prophet Rob Sanchez. It'll be probably posted to Troy's. So let's come in. Let's fill the house with expectation. And we're going to hear the word of the Lord tonight. I cannot wait. So we will be praying for many more tonight online, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But go ahead. If there anything you, you want, anyone you want to pick, anything you feel, let's yeah, do this. Yeah, uh, I think Anna Avila, if that's how you say your name, I just, I heard the Lord saying that the Lord's moving you into a new season and he's actually going to be showering. That word specifically is for you, showering his goodness over you. And this is weird because... I hear the Lord saying, I, you know, I would assume that the Lord would say, take your umbrella down and receive this, this showering, right? But I hear the Lord saying, put your umbrella up so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. Because not all of the blessings that God is bringing into your life are for you. Some of them, He wants you to catch what's going on. He wants you to have a clear view of it. You know, and when you go out into a rainstorm and you enjoy the rain and you have an umbrella over your head... It's like you can, you can hear the sounds, you're getting hit with it, it's close to you, and then you've got, it's like you've got an extra shower going over the edge of your umbrella, right? And it's a rush mm-hmm. of water. And there's this, this idea that the Lord is going to be showering His blessings, His goodness on you, 
but it's not just for you. It's for you to collect and to be obedient and say, Lord, what, what do you want me to do with this now? Who do, you want, who do you want me to bless? Who do you want me to share this with? Yeah. Well, there's a Skylar, Skylar Whitney Prock. Skylar, this is what I hear the Spirit of God saying. This is your appointed season for victory. The last season, it seemed like you were a yo-yo, maybe went up and down. But I literally saw the hand of the Lord come and cut the string. You're not going to be pulled up and down anymore. You're going to become steady. You're going to become the strong. The day of emotions going up and down where at times you felt weak, the Lord says you were well-rooted and now you'll see the season of your grafting produce great fruit. The Lord said, I am the vine, you are the branches, you are positioned in me and I will make all things fruitful. Scholar, this is the season where you're gonna see a turnaround, a suddenly, and the breakthrough and the blessing of God come upon those in whom you've been praying for and the hand of the Lord coming upon them so mightily that their world and their hearts are truly transformed. They will speak different, they will walk different, they will talk different because they will convey the message of the Christ that you live and exemplify. Get ready for a turnaround season of favor, grace and blessing says the Spirit of the Lord. Chris Reblin, when I read your message, I just heard the Lord say, I have forgiven you, says the Lord. I heard it so clearly. I have forgiven you, says the Lord. Mm. And I, I just heard the Lord saying, stop running to your goodness and run to mine. Run to the blood. Run to the cross. It's, it's already there. It's already done. It's already completed. When Jesus said it's finished on the cross, that was he was forgiving your sin, past, present, and future. The Lord knew that you were going to come to him. The Lord knew that you, you are his you got to start seeing from his perspective. I hear the Lord saying, just start looking from my perspective. And that perspective is found, that perspective is shifted in Scripture. When you get into the Gospels and you see what Jesus said and did, when you get into the New Testament letters and you see the explanation of the good news, like, what does this mean? I hear the Lord saying that. Ask, start asking that question when you read the Word. What is the good news of the Gospel? What does that mean? And I know the Lord is going to speak to you through that. Hallelujah. My goodness. There is, there's so many people that are jumping in right now but there is a Jessica Emmanuel. Jessica, I love what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He said, I am your strength, I am your hope, but I am also your truth. Your last name, Emmanuel, means God is with us. And I felt like the Lord said, I want you to know that there is no place you have gone and no place you will go that I will not be present. I am gonna elevate you in this season and I'm gonna cause you to see from the eyes of favor. You'll no longer see an enemy, but you'll see my angelic presence. You will see the favor, the blessing, the goodness of God. You'll see the mercy everywhere you go. I heard the Lord say, Psalm 65, 11 will be your portion. Jessica, Psalm 65, 11 declares that God has crowned this year with favor and he'll cause your pathways to drip with abundance. This next season of your life, not only is it crowned, but God says your pathways will drip with favor. Get ready because you are positioned in favor. You'll see the increase and the blessing of the Lord say so on your life. Rejoice, a new day has come. Yeah, I, I heard the Lord just say the word feather. And then as soon as I heard that Heather Cannon, your name popped up, it rhymes with feather. So uh, this is what I was uh, seeing from the Lord was this image of uh, like an old fashioned quill, you know, where you fill it up with ink and you start to write. And I just heard uh, that there's stories that it's not just stories that the Lord is going to pull out of you. But it's that you have this, what I'm sensing from the Lord is that you have this interest in old stories. You have this interest in old writings. Uh, and even when you're in scripture, you're drawn to some of the things that some other people aren't typically drawn to. You know, a lot of times people like have a, have a problem with some of the Old Testament, you know, stories and things like that. And, and I really feel like the Lord is saying those things just fascinate you. And God is going to be using that. He's going to be showing you what is this for? Why do I have this desire? Why do I have this dream or this knowledge? You know, what, what is this? What is this gift? And the Lord's just going to be revealing layer after layer. He's going to be unfolding things is what I hear him saying for you mm. in this coming season. You're going to start seeing, wow, this is it. This is why. Just, just be open to that. Let the Lord lead you. And, you know, even in the times where it feels weird, it feels hard, it feels difficult, or you're like, I, I'm not sure here, just keep running back to the Holy Spirit in prayer and, and submitting that to the Lord. And don't, don't put it above the word of the Lord in your, in your life, the voice of the Lord in your life. Ooh, that's good stuff. My goodness. Well, I'll do one more. There is a, a God First 707 
uh, you are on Instagram. And this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. Cast your burden unto me and know that I care for you. The Lord says, don't let the weight of the shoulder, the weight on your shoulders pull you down. But the Lord says, know that you are the strong and I've given you the power to rise above it. God says, this is an appointed time for you to rise up. The Lord says, let the praises of God say so on your behalf. When David was anointed with the horn of oil, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. The word forward translates and means aliyah, it means to be lifted up. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say, if you would give me a praise in this season, I would lift you up and the weight that you feel like is pulling you down will be removed. You will recognize that you're not under stress, that you're under the tension of the Lord. The Lord says tension is what is added to a thing so it could move forward. The Lord says you are like an arrow in my bow and I am allowing tension to be on you so I can release my hand and shoot you forward. The Lord says there is a new place, there is a new appointment and there is a mark that I have set for you. The Lord says, do not fear. Know that my hand is on you. I will cause your trouble and your struggle to be over and I will put you in a new place and in that space, your heart will rejoice. Know that I am with you, says the spirit of the Lord. That's good stuff, That's awesome. man. Yeah. I think tonight is going to be a, a simple term, fire. I think God is going to show up. I just feel the presence of God residing here. I'm super excited to have Troy with us tonight. Uh, for those of you that are LIVG World Changers partner, the two of us are going to jump on at three o'clock for that Zoom. And we're going to be on that for about an hour. And then we're going to get ready, lock ourselves up and be ready for tonight. He's probably going to take a nap yeah. <laughs> and rest a little. But we'll be back at 7 p.m. for what the heavens are saying. Don't want to miss it. So partners, in about an hour's time, we will be uh, going live for a, for a period of time. We're going to share a quick word and just really minister life to those that are coming on, share some exciting things that God is doing here at LIVG Ministries. Well, there's one thing we say here at LIVG, no matter what you go through, no matter what you face, it never changes the fact that life is what? Very good. Go ahead and say goodbye. Bye, everyone. We'll see you guys soon. Have a great day.